welcome to the next project. This is episode one of my Harley Benton DC, think SG, guitar kit modification project series. In this episode, we'll be stripping away all the bad, making room for a lot of new good. We'll be taking the guitar apart and then apart and apart some more. My hope for this guitar throughout this series is to greatly simplify it and improve it wherever I can and to make it something that anybody would be thrilled to have. Let's start the next project. Not much special to report here. I didn't waste any time taking this kit apart. Um, pulled the screws out. Didn't try to destroy anything other than the strings. I just cut them loose. Uh, everything else will get um, recycled in some way or given away or something. Uh, the tuners, actually, they'll probably go in the recycle bin because they are really bad. Oh, the fret wire will go in the recycle bin too. Pulling out the tactical frets, preparing the neck for its future, and only one of the frets was actually glued in. It's funny, I think it was around the 12th fret. Uh, looked like it must have been loose, so they put some super glue or something under it and stuck it back in. I actually did give a little bit of thought to what I wanted to do with this guitar and uh, did a sketch of the body, did a few notes on it, and then uh, went right to the drill press or the pillar drill and hogged out a big chunk of the center. I think, uh, yeah, this would be an Olympic sized swimming pool. Getting the dust out of there. I had some rails taped to the side that I ran my router over. Now that it's deep enough, I'm able to use the bearing on the bit and the sides of the channel that I've already cut as the template and finishing out the depth of the cut. Part of my plan is just to get rid of everything they gave me and kind of start new. With the wood excavation done, I was able to add some glue and push in my new center block. I marked it for down there, tapped it in, added a little bit of tape because I couldn't find my wax paper, clamped it up, it's ready to dry. Also plugged all the tuner and control switch holes, also the strange extra hole uh, that comes from manufacturing in the neck pocket. Shaved those off from here. Um, I'm, I'm trimming off the bottom side, the part that's in the cavity. You can't get a chisel in there. So I flipped it over and just used my router to smooth everything off for the moment. I will probably go back and clean up the uh, control cavity again later. Using a homemade sander here, I'm knocking down the height of that center block that I added just a little bit, just to get it pretty much level with the top of the guitar. Flipping around um, my sander here so I can use it as a thickness sander. It doesn't have a motorized drive belt on it. I, uh, I, I'm the motor for that. And here you can see a few uh, low spots left, so I have to keep sanding. And this did take some time. Uh, there's quite a bit of sanding needed to get it truly level uh, thickness wise all the way across. Cleaning up the center plug a little bit on an oscillating belt sander here and it's wobbling around because it's sitting on a rubber trash can. This is ribbon mahogany veneer, and I was a little concerned I wouldn't have enough to do this, but it ended out to be just perfect. Traced out the body, trimming away the excess. There was one little split in one side. I put some tape on for now, but that won't show. Here's some veneer softener, and the magic here is you just spray both sides of the veneer, uh, sandwich it between some uh, preferably white paper product, clamp it with some weights. 
In preparing to do the glue, I decided to tape off the bevel all the way around just to keep any uh, squeeze out glue from getting on there and bonding the oversized cut veneer in a place that I didn't want it. Using uh, original tight bond, taping the veneer down, putting it in the vacuum bag and drawing it down. It only takes a few seconds to draw this down, roll it out, let it sit about an hour because I moved on to do other things. Tight bond sets up so quick it was probably ready to pull out of the bag in about 15 minutes. Flipped it over and doing the same process to the other side. Back in the bag it goes, draw it down, squeeze out a few bubbles and it's ready. The only thing I should have done differently on the back would have been to trim away a part of the control cavity. You can see it cracked it down in there pretty good. I should have opened that hole up. It would have given the uh, veneer a chance to stay on the, the body form a little bit better. And trimming away just a little bit of the excess that's not glued to the body. This is really just to keep it from getting snagged and breaking and possibly doing some damage. Here I'm prepping the patient for surgery and getting it uh, leveled and stuck down to my bench. I'm using two uh, one and a half inch oak runners, one on either side, that will be used as rails so I can uh, evenly uh, remove material from the top of the neck and that material would be the old fingerboard. Just a hair more to remove. There's a little bit of binding left on the sides there. That's as close as I can get it without tearing up the sides of the neck. Now I'm struggling to get the truss rod out of the trench and you can see I had that much twist on it and it was still wedged in there pretty tight. Now I go ahead and I clean up the, uh, the neck channel a little bit or the truss rod channel. Flip it over and start leveling it out taking a little bit of bow out of the neck. Also had to deepen the end where the uh, adjustment part of the truss rod is. And it's ready for the next step. So the takeaway on the neck was um, I ended up routing the fingerboard off the neck. I didn't want to take the time to see if an iron would work on this uh, fingerboard or not. It might have, I'm not sure. Uh, it was glued on very well and they used what appeared to be possibly a double-sided adhesive tape right down the center over the top of the truss rod. This is not the first time I've seen a thin strip of double-sided uh, like uh, that gift wrapping tape, you know, a really thin double-sided cellophane tape. Um, it's very similar to that. <clears throat> anyway, off the topic a little bit. Uh, I did route through the fingerboard, got down to the uh, uh, truss rod itself and it was stuck in the trench and it wasn't necessarily glue that was in I think the trench was just so narrow and so tight that uh, the truss rod was stuck I had it cranked and it, it was trying to pry itself out of the trench um, it wasn't really moving the net it, 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 anyway it was really stuck uh, so I eased the trench just a little bit and found out another part the uh, the very end where you put the Allen key uh, adjustment tool in, um, it was not routed quite deep enough. It needed to go almost another 30 second of an inch deeper. Uh, and I think that will alleviate the problem um, with the um, end of the truss rod trying to pop up. And in, in, in this case, it was hitting the bottom of the nut. And that's another problem. The truss rod was installed too far out toward the tuners. It needed to be pushed back above. 16th of an inch possibly so I've got it all squared away now I'm going to cut a new fingerboard uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length uh, what was on the guitar was metric um, I don't have a metric scale length and I don't want to make one right now so I'm just going to use what I have cut a new fingerboard and get that glued on probably next weekend so we're getting close got a lot done today and let's get back to the next project
Again, using what I had on hand, which was a piece of rosewood. This had a metric scale length on it, which I don't have a metric scale length uh, fret slotting template. So I used, again, what I had on hand, which was a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length template that I had made a few years ago. Using the table saw with my homemade fret slotting blade in it. it worked great. And here we're getting ready to radius the fingerboard to a 12 inch radius. This is another jig that I put together a while ago. Man, this makes life pleasant. It was worth the effort. I think, uh, seeing what I'm doing later, that this step is unnecessary. I found that plugging these holes before I do the, uh, the next steps of surgery actually help me get better cuts and control steps that I have to do later. So it seems like, you know, a waste because it gets cut away, but it does help. Here I'm measuring things out finding my center line, determining how much of the uh, headstock I want to cut away, um, for an initial cut at least. Going back to the table saw and using kind of a cross-cut sled of sorts and just I tape the headstock to the sled and just run it across the saw and it does nice straight cuts adding a little bit of veneer and some wings to the headstock. And we're gonna glue it on and clamp it up here in just a moment. I was really pleased with how good the cuts were on the headstock and also these additional pieces I'm adding to the headstock. They were so straight that when I put glue on there, they almost suctioned themselves together, which is really nice. I did tape on the cutaway scrap pieces from the original headstock just to give me a better uh, surface to put some clamps on. And uh, I just walked away for about an hour when the clamping was done and everything was good. Peeling off the excess uh, original wings and cleaning up a little bit of squeeze out glue. And we are wrapping up this video. I want to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, this project is going pretty well so far, even uh, though it was greatly challenged to begin with. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like, subscribe, leave me some comments, and be ready to come back for episode two very soon. Take care.